morning, folks. This is John Pettypaw recording on the morning of Wednesday. It's now one minute before nine o'clock in the morning on the morning of Wednesday, which is the third day of March, 2021. And this, I'm doing a special video this morning on a very Nova Scotia symbol. I got these flaps, my, my Sylvester. I'm going to put them underneath my... There, put them in the... That's better. Get the, get those ties. There's no wind in here this morning. For as I open up, for God's sake, please pray for the homeless. It's extremely cold. It's bitter cold. You see, now pray for them. It's wonderful. The power of prayer is infinitely good from God Almighty. And also, actually, prayer must be accompanied by doing something. And you see homeless people this morning. Bring them a hot beverage, a hot chocolate, a coffee. A, Muffin, muffin with raisins or fruit, uh, what do you call it, uh, fruit explosion. They had them at the coffee shops, uh, um, carrot muffins. Uh, Tim Horton sells a fan. I like to eat it myself. It's great stuff. They have hot chili. It comes with a roll. you got to, so, ripe bananas. A lot of the homeless people don't have good teeth. And as a result, they soft foods. No going to bring them a hard apple or pear that's not ripe. But a ripe banana, ripe banana, uh, Tim Horton says, lovely chili when rolled, something hot. So have a little bit of compassion and uh, do something to help your your fellow man, help your fellow humanity. It's a, it's a bitter cold day out there. Some people in life say, well, why are they there? Well, I don't care why they're there. They're human beings and deserve our respect and compassion. They take it. Uh, I had one I read an article of somebody felt sorry for themselves. They said, poor, when it sung, poor, pitiful, pitiful me. I, I hate that stuff, self-pity. They had, uh, somebody said, I felt sorry for myself. I read it in bits and pieces book one. Felt sorry for themselves because they had no shoes on their feet. No sneakers, no shoes. Until he met a man upon the street that had no feet. I'm going to repeat that. So everything in life is relative. Individual felt sorry for himself because he had no sandals, no shoes, no sneakers, no footwear on his feet until he met a man upon the street that had no feet. So all things in life are relative. So pray for the homeless today, but for God's sake, get them something warm or nutritious, muffin, pastry, Tim Hortons, chili, help out. Now, a few housekeeping notes as I get going here. It was the veterans. I have this here. I, I love this quote. It was the veterans, not the press, that gave us freedom. So when you have the right to get out and vote, I always say men and women have fought and died, put their lives in line, so we have the right to vote. It wasn't the press. It was a veteran. So I'm going to repeat. It was the veterans, not the reporters, that gave us freedom of the press. That's extremely important. The veterans. We salute them. All of them. Each and every one of them. Gone and still present and people still actively engaged in military. And it take, and I'm also going to point out that I did la my most recent video up until now, it was my 100th video, is John Pettipaw's views on guns. And I mentioned that guns and hunting guns and rifles and uh, legally owned in the United States, a very interesting figure a wonderful gentleman gave me. There's over something like 300,000 uh, legally registered guns in the United States. And 300, excuse me. Misspoke. Now, 300, 300 million. Or the 12, say in French. One, two, three. Three. There was one, two, three. They take and uh, 300 million legal riches guns in the United States. And with that, there's, oh, there's be uh, billions of rounds of ammunition. So if if the if the legally riches of guns were the problem, I think you would have heard from those people before. Now, I have an, it gives me great pleasure to point out this morning, actually tomorrow, I'm doing a video today, it'll be uploaded later this afternoon, a very happy birthday to a wonderful lady, she's an Acadian lady in Petit de Gras, Richmond County. This is the Acadian flag. The red, white, and blue with the golden star, which represents the Blessed Virgin Mary, the patron saint of us French Acadians, patron saint of French Acadian people. This lady is a very faithful, wonderful lady, and the lady's name is Tilly Sampson, and Petit de Gras, in Richmond County, in Elizabeth family, and this birth is tomorrow. 
Tomorrow, Thursday, the fourth day of March, this wonderful lady is going to be 88 years young. So I'm going to get up here. Mademoiselle, Madame Sampson, John Pettipaw wishing you joyous 88th birthday and many more. Wonderful Acadian lady that's worked hard all life, raised a big family, and eats lots of fish. And that brings me right into our video today. Eats lots of fish. God bless you today on your 87th, 364th day on God's earth. And tomorrow morning you get up for your breakfast, you're going to be 88 years young. Happy birthday, Tilly Sampson of Petit de Gras on Isle Madame, Richmond County, Cape Breton Island, Nova Scotia. She's Acadian ancestry and on in beautiful Cape Breton Island. Isle Madame and Cape Breton Island. Wonderful lady. Now, this month, March of 2021, actually March 26th, which is basically just uh, shy of three weeks and a day or two, from now, it'll mark the 100th anniversary of the launch of the famous Blue Nose. My, my cap here, it's Nova Scotia Southwester. Nova Scotia Southwester. And the Blue Nose, if you look at the old version, the Canadian $100 bill, the brown ones, on the back of them, there was a picture, there's a picture of the scene, would be from up by the top mast motel in Lunenburg town, Lunenburg County, South Shore, Nova Scotia, and you're looking down over the harbor. So the, the old Canadian $100 bills, the back scene of that $100 bill, and I wish I had one here this morning to show you, the older version Canadian $100 bill is a scene of Lunenburg Harbor. Now that blue nose is a remarkable vessel. It's the, it's the sort of articles I got here. Blue nose, Lunenburg, 1921, the blue nose, fantastic. We're going to make some points. Did you know, a century ago, if you happened to, to have found yourself in the sloping streets of downtown Lundberg, you might have caught the tinge of excitement there. Down at the end of uh, Montague Street that January, at the Smith and Rutland Shipyard, the Smith and Rutland Shipyard, a new, highly anticipated fishing vessel is being built at breakneck speed. Expected that uh, they're going to follow the blueprints from the architect William James Root. And so the, the then Governor General, Sir Christian William Cavendish, the Duke of Devonshire, he was invited to drive the Golden Spike, and he had his, he had his thing to drive the Spike, but he had been in a fire water that morning, and he missed. I, I don't know if it's historically correct or not, but they say that the, the keel had a bit of a, a warp in it, where the lumber, if it's not properly dried, or sometimes it just warps, just the nature of the beast lumber, the, the lumber warps. And it was a remarkable vessel, remarkable vessel, and it was officially launched on March 26 of 1921. It cost $35,000 and 100-year-old money, which today would be equivalent to about a half a million dollars, and kicked off a legendary career. And they, she, she ran. She was a, she was a, a schooner, a schooner, and uh, she ran in a very famous, very famous. She got back a trophy. She got back this this very famous trophy. She, and she was she was captained by a, a very solid character. And I'm just going to digress here for a second. I've been cutting this out. Mention of my blue nose video. Okay, this here is a Captain James Hill. Himmelman. Himmelman. He passed away at 100 years old. And this is just from the paper on Tuesday, the 18th day of the month. 16, excuse me. So basically looking at uh, two weeks ago yesterday. Okay, Captain James Hillman. And it said, uh, said, Profound sadness that we announced the passing of our dear father, Captain James L. Hillman of Bridgewater. Captain Jim let his lines cross the bar Fisherman Memorial Hospital, Lunenburg, on February 11, 2021, at the age of 100. I'm going to repeat that. Captain Jim let his let go the lines and cross the bar. Let go the lines and cross the bar at the Fisherman's Memorial Hospital in Lunenburg on, say, February 11th of uh, this year, 2021. They take and he went to. Dad grew up in the age of wooden ships and iron men. Okay, they take and uh, he uh, he worked on a converted Irish uh, vessel, 
which uh, was the first scallop dragon to sail out of Lunenburg Harbor. Okay, very proud to have been first captain of the Lunenburg Harbor, pioneer, pioneer in the scallop industry. We often think of Digby, and it's wonderful Digby scallops, but scallops obviously fished out of uh, Lunenburg as well. Okay, in his words, my brothers and my father, my uncles, and generations after generations of fishermen, that was Lunenburg, that... Lunenburg was built by. That was Lunenburg was built by. So they're, they're solid men, wooden ships, and men of steel. And this is Captain Hilleman, and from Lunenburg, he died in the Fisherman's Memorial Hospital in Lunenburg, which would be right in the town where the Blue Nose, the Blue Nose was launched. Now this year, this year they're having for the full year, they're having down at the Fisherman's Museum of the Atlantic. They're going to have a year-long commemoration of the. Of the Blue Nose. And people's getting pretty fed up, to put it mildly, with being locked down like this. And I noticed this morning that the governor, actually last night, it was in this morning's news again. Governor Texas yesterday afternoon, Greg Abbott, he's a solid character. And he's no more mask mandates and opening all businesses 100% up in the great state of Texas. Likewise, we're going to have to get this here. It wasn't so bad last March and April. People get clean up their limbs and the... And the out from the leaves, the trees and limbs, not leaves, but limbs, limbs, and stuff that blown over in the yard, cleaning it up, getting ready for garden, building decks, putting a new roof on the, on the garage, or building a new garage, whatever. But this winter's been a tough winter for many people, so there are people's willing and ready to get out and conduct their business. Back here to the, the right here to the blue nose. This here is something comes with these caps I sell. Official Order Sylvester. Now, Nova Scotia is very famous for sailing. Very famous. And on the Canadian dime is the Blue Nose. You look at your Canadian 10 cent piece, not your nickels, not your quarters, is the Blue Nose. And I was a very young Amway distributor. Actually, I'm told I was the youngest Amway distributor at age 14 back in 1974 in Amway Corporation. We had the pleasure of having Rich DeVos, the co-founder of Amway, up at, a, up at an address he gave us, a motivational talk at uh, Hotel Nova Scotia back in, would have been back in 1974 as well. Okay, and he was at Hotel Nova Scotia, and he takes and uh, they, per se, they presented Rich a lovely, kind, kind of like a mural. It was made of glass, set in plaster, and it was of the blue nose in full sail. And that blue nose vessel went down Post World War, I think it was 1946-47, off of Haiti. After seeing its heyday as a schooner, as a racing vessel that won won the big cups, big trophies, it ended up as a, a freighter and it went down and it met its uh, demise on a reef off of Haiti in the Caribbean. So anyway, I remember distinctly that Saturday afternoon they presented Rich DeVos of Amway Corporation, co-founder of Amway, a, a lovely, it was pieces of glass. Artists had did cut it out glass work and had it inlaid in plaster and it was all framed up with the uh I think there was a glass cover on it. And he was very impressed and, and extremely delighted. They did a beautiful job. And that was back in 1974. So you're talking, uh, well, it's 47 years ago now. Time flies quick, doesn't it? So the Blue Nose, the beloved Nova Scotia Blue Nose. You see here, Lunenburg, big boat shed reopens to, for the 100th anniversary of the Blue Nose. And this here again, I'm going to take my glasses off to read the fine print here. I think it's the... The newly restored waterfront structure was the main boat building facility for the historic South Shore Towns Smith and Rutland shipyards, where 270 ships were constructed over the decades. The most famous creations include the Blue Nose 2, which is a replica of the Blue Nose 1. It used to be it used to be ran by uh, owned by the Olin family that had uh, Olin schooner lager beer. Okay. They eventually gifted the boat to the province. Of course, you can still see the Blue Nose to it. It's, it's been rebuilt several times. I guess the only thing hasn't been changed in is the keel. But let's say it's been extensively rebuilt at great expense. But it's a wonderful goodwill sailing ambassador to the province. And we look forward to this province and all it can to get opened up. It really hurts our economy when you can't get visitors from the United States, from Ontario, from Quebec, from other parts of the country and world, and people looking forward to getting back doing their business.
And with that, I got to wrap up. I pay homage to all the fishermen that sail at sea in rough weathers to get, be it scallops, haddock, halibut, lobster, whatever. They take, uh, take some guts and courage. And Nova Scotia, we are at Canada's ocean playground. Canada's ocean playground. That was our motto for years. and It still should be our motto. Nova Scotia, Canada's ocean playground. And we pay, her we pay homage to men that are an integral part of the fishing heritage, like Captain Hilleman just gone up to heaven now, and the people that built, built, constructed, and sailed the famous Blue Nose. And there's lots more history you can get on the Blue Nose. And if you get up to Nova Scotia this year, or if you're Nova Scotia already, take a trip, take an afternoon, a weekend out with the kids, or get out there and see the... Atlantic Museum, Museum, Fisheries Museum at Atlantic in Halifax, and also the beautiful exhibit Rate in Lunaburg. They're, they're, they're really solid characters on the South Shore. They're, they're, of, uh, they're of German, Dutch ancestry, and the Rodenizers, and the Zwickers, and, and the Hillmans, and the Eisenhoffers, believe me, they're, they're top notch solid characters. With that, I gotta go, and I wish you all all the best. God bless. Thank you for subscribing. Share this video around. This is John Petty Pie now wrapping up at 15 minutes past 9 o'clock in the morning on the morning of Wednesday, the third day of March 2021. Thank you very much. Bye for now. And look out for the homeless today. I wish Mrs. Tilly Sampson tomorrow morning a very happy 88th birthday and all of us to remember the veterans. It's not the press. It's not the press. As interesting as the articles are to read, it's not. It's not the press. It's the soldiers that we, the veterans, we owe our freedom of press and freedom period to. Thank you very much. Bye for now.